Tide is a minimal and pragmatic web application framework for Rust. It comes with a robust set of features that make building async web applications and APIs easier and fun. To get started with Tide, let's first create a new project using Cargo New. We'll call our project Wizard API. With our new project created, we can add the Tide crate to the cargo.toml. We'll also need to add an async runtime. The recommended runtime to use is async std, so let's follow that recommendation. If Tokyo is more your preference, it's possible to also use it, but more on that later. Whilst we're here, let's add in Surde as well, so we can do some encoding and decoding. With the necessary crates added, we can now start writing our web API. Let's jump on over to our main.rs file. Okay, so now that we're here, let's turn our main function into an async function and have it return a tide result of OK. Next, we can create the app using the tide new function and tell it to listen at port 8080. Now let's go ahead and run our server and send a curl request to it just to see that it's running, which it is, but it's returning a 404. Let's go ahead and add a handler for the get slash path. We use the at method of the app to set the path and follow up with the get method. Then we pass in an async closure and return a result of OK with our hello world string inside. Now let's rerun our code and send another curl request. We get back the response of hello world. Pretty easy. Using a closure is fine for a simple endpoint, but it's a little clearer when the code is in a function and a little bit more testable. Let's go ahead and move it to one. You'll see we require the parameter of tied request, which accepts a generic type. This type represents any state the request might have, which we'll look in more detail later. At the moment, the state is empty. Now with the function created, we can go ahead and add it to our index route. Now, if we run curl, we can see it works the same as it did before. Okay, so this is pretty basic, but it's a great starting point. Let's do a quick power walk through some of the other web application features that Tide provides. Query parameters can be obtained one of two ways. The first is to load them in as key value pairs using the query pairs method of the request URL. Using this method, we can iterate over the pairs to find the query parameter that matches what we're looking for. A more elegant solution, however, is to deserialize the query parameters into a struct. Tide does this under the hood using the Surday QS package. So all we have to do is define a struct that represents our expected query parameters and to derive the deserialized method. With that done, we can go ahead and call the query method of the request. If we also implement the default interface on our custom type, we can ensure that we have a default value for the query parameters, which tend to be optional. Powerful stuff. As well as query parameters, Tide also has support for path parameters. We can define an expected path parameter in our route by using the colon followed by the name of the parameter. In this case, we're setting it to name. Now in our handler function, we can call the param method on the request to pull out our parameter. This method can fail, so it's a good idea to handle that error or set up a default using the unwrap or method. We can now use curl and pass in the name parameter via the path. The response returns the value we passed in. If you're making an API, there's a good chance you're going to want to pass JSON. Tide has native support for Surday JSON, which is used for encoding and decoding request and response bodies. To parse JSON from the request body, we first need a type to parse into. Let's create a struct we want to represent as our JSON body. Next, we derive from the deserialized type of Surday. Now, in order to load the request body, we first need to mark our request as mutable. This is so we can actually read from the internal body stream. Now all we do is call the rec.bodyjson method, which will use Surde under the hood and deserialize into our type. Now when we send a JSON payload to our server, it is correctly parsed into our wizard type. To send JSON in our response is a similar process. First, let's derive the serialized type in our struct. Then we can create a method that returns a result of tied body. Finally, we can send JSON back using the from JSON method with our value. Super easy and refreshingly elegant. As your web application grows, having all of your routes at the top level can be overwhelming. Fortunately, Tide provides nested routing by using the nest method on a route. The nest method takes a closure which expects a tied route to be returned. By doing so, we can easily group our API resources together or nest our entire API under a version, such as v1 or v2. So far, we've only been sending back HTTP 200s. In a production server, we're going to want to send back other status codes depending on the outcomes of other operations. 
In order to send back custom status codes, we can create a new response type using the new function while passing in the desired status code, either via the status code enum or using the integer value. With this type, we can then set the response body and return that as the result. You can also use the response builder, which allows us to create a response without using the mutable keyword, whichever floats your boat. You can serve static files easily by using the serve file method of a route and by just pointing it at the file you wish to serve. Additionally, you can serve a directory as well using the serve dir method. Tide provides some easy cookie management for both requests and responses. Using the cookie method on the request allows us to pull out cookie values by key, and we can ask the client to store and remove cookies using the associated methods on a response type. Logging is an important part of running an API. Tide provides a logging middleware that can be used using the with keyword on the app slash router. However, just using this by itself won't do anything. You'll also need to set up a logger using a package such as fem or simple logger. The documentation uses fem, so we're going to do the same. First, let's add the crate to our cargo.toml. Then we can call the start method of the module in our main function. Now we have some pretty logging whenever we make a request. At some point, you're going to want to share state across your endpoints. This is likely going to be in the form of a repository such as a database or an event bus. We can do this by creating an app using the with state method provided by the tide module and passing in what we want to use as state. In our case, it's going to be our repository, which doesn't actually work. Tide is asynchronous, so we need to make sure that whatever type we use for the state conforms to the clone, send and sync traits. Now, this probably sounds complicated, but don't worry. In most cases, you can wrap your type in an arc, which stands for automatic reference count. In our case, this won't work as we need a mutable reference to the underlying data structure. So we're going to use a read write lock provided by the async std package in order to make changes to the state in our handlers. Now that our type conforms to the expected interfaces, we can use the with state method to generate a router that provides state in its requests. We can then define methods that expect our state type in the input parameters. Finally, we can access our repository using the state method of the request. With that, we have a simple repository for storing and retrieving wizards, which we can add endpoints to manipulate the internal state with. As well as using middleware, such as with the logging middleware we saw earlier, we can also define our own middleware to use with Tide. To define a middleware function, we use a similar interface as we do for requests but with the additional parameter of next, which specifies the next function in the call chain. We can then perform computation before and after calling the next function. By using middleware, we can set the extension value of a request so information is passed along down the call chain or to modify any other request parameters. We can also use middleware to intercept and send back a response before going further down the chain. This can be useful for tasks such as rate limiting or checking the validity of a JSON web token. I mentioned at the start that async SDD is the recommended asynchronous runtime to use, and it's probably a good idea to do so. But there may be a case in which you have to or just want to use Tokyo. Let's say your favorite library uses Tokyo under the hood and isn't compatible with async SDD. Well, fortunately, you can get tied to work with Tokyo. To do so is actually pretty simple. Just add Tokyo to the cargo.toml and change the main function to use Tokyo main instead. Now, this should work as expected. I've not found any issues with this, but I also haven't tested it extensively. There's no reference to this in the documentation, so your mileage may vary. Tide itself is a simple and familiar web framework to use with Rust. Having spent a lot of time working with Node, Go, and C++, Tide feels a lot closer to home compared to other Rust web frameworks, which can typically use more magic under the hood. I really enjoy writing APIs in Rust, and I'm looking forward to doing some future content on creating Rust microservices. I hope you enjoyed this brief look at Tide and I'll see you on the next one.